Talk with Dr. Michael Smith, MD. And now, here's the country doctor with a city education, Dr. Mike. So did you know that melatonin, you know, the sleep hormone, is not just for sleep anymore? You know, melatonin is that hormone as your day ends, you know, the sun kind of goes down, there's less light, your your brain kind of, it should at least, start to calm down a little bit, you get a little sleepy. That's all from melatonin. It's an antioxidant that comes from the pineal gland, and as I just mentioned, it initiates sleep cycles. It's not so much about putting you to sleep. Melatonin plays a very important role in making sure that you go through all the stages of sleep, which is very important to healing and restoration for your body. Now, it also calms brainwave activity. Melatonin relaxes muscles. It slows digestion. A nice way to think about it, it's the counter to cortisol. Cortisol is the stress hormone. That tends to be higher in the day. Melatonin is lower in the day. But as you get towards nighttime and when it's time to go to bed, cortisol should be dropping, right? And melatonin should be coming up. So they kind of counterbalance each other. Most of these effects that I'm describing with melatonin, the traditional effects, anywhere between 0.5 to 3 milligrams at night. Now, melatonin can be powerful for some people. If you've never taken it, don't start with 3 milligrams. You know, there's a nice little saying in, in medicine, start low and go slow. That's just a nice rule for everything, whether it's a prescription d- drug, whether it's exercise, whether it's melatonin, start low and go slow. That's a good rule to follow. But here's the good news about melatonin. More and more research is coming out that it has some other benefits for the human body. And the first one I want to mention, melatonin can stop bone loss. Some early animal studies showed that melatonin was a, and this is a quote from the, from the authors, was a positive regulator of bone mass. That just simply, it's a fancy way of saying melatonin is good for your bones. Now, these were animal studies, and they were in young animals, and that's really not the right population that we want to study bone loss because uh, that's an older population. The older Americans are dealing with um, the bone loss situation, whether it's from osteopenia, osteoporosis. So there were some researchers who decided to test this hypothesis that melatonin is good for your bones in older animal studies. So this was an old male rat study. They were divided into two randomly assigned groups. The first group was treated, treated for 10 weeks with melatonin, whereas the second group was left alone, untreated. They then took the rat femurs, they collected some biopsies out of it, and they put those biopsies through biomechanical property testing using something that's really interesting to me because I come from a a radiology background called micro-CT scans. I guess they're small little CT scans for rats. Uh, And, of course, they did some other um, biochemical studies to look at the effects that melatonin had on the bone versus the rats that didn't get any of the melatonin. What they found was that the rats treated with melatonin had higher bone volume. They had more trabecular bone. That's the kind of the middle part of the, the bone. They also had thicker cortical bone, which is at the, the edges of the bone. And this is in comparison to the control group. So it sure does seem, in this very short study, granted an animal model, but rats make good human models. It is what it is. They do. In this small old rat study, melatonin had some very significant positive effects on all parts of the bone. Bone volume, the middle part of the bone, which is that trabecular part, and then the outside part called the cortisol. It also showed that melatonin-treated rats had increased bone flexibility. That's important. Bone strength is not really linked to how much calcium and mineralization is in the bone. That actually can make for a rigid bone and can make the bone weaker. Bone strength is measured by flexibility. Yeah, your bones actually can flex, especially the long bones in your arms and your legs. They can flex. That flexibility does not come from the minerals. It comes from a protein called collagen. Turns out that the melatonin-treated rats had more bone flexibility, which means more strength, and it probably... The hypothesis now is melatonin has an effect on cortisol production in the bones. 
The researchers, I'm going to quote this because I think it's a, it's a good quote. This is right from the study. Quote, these compelling results are the first evidence indicating that dietary melatonin supplementation is able to exert beneficial effects against age-related bone loss in old rats, improving the microstructure and biomechanical properties of aged bones, end quote. I like that. Melatonin. It's important because as we get older and we lose that bone mass, right, that's, that's not a good thing. You know, the loss of bone mass, it's not just fractures. There is a lot of core morbidities that are associated with the loss of, of, of bone, Things like, um, you know, metabolic disorders, lung disorders, infections, all of these can be linked to loss of bone uh, mass. And of course, you still have the fracture risk as well. So this is an important study. It's always nice to see uh, something new in research, in this case, melatonin. Melatonin, the sleep hormone helping your bones. The human equivalent dose in this study was between three to six milligrams a day. Again, that's a lot of melatonin. Don't start like that. What's that, that little rule I said at the beginning, right? Start low and go slow, meaning you might start at a half of a milligram of melatonin. And maybe you increase it slowly every two or three weeks to, you know, a milligram and then a, a, a one and a half milligrams, then two. And you work it up to that three to six range slowly. Melatonin can have some pretty big effects in the brain. The most common complaint if you start too high is you're groggy the next day and you have some weird dreams. So if you do take some melatonin that happens, just lower the dose. It doesn't mean you have to start. It's not a, it's not a reaction. It's not a reaction of the melatonin. You're, that's just a normal response sometimes for people. So you're going to feel groggy and have weird dreams if you start too high. A second thing that, that this, and I found this interesting, there's evidence in research now that melatonin could also be good for migraine sufferers. Taking melatonin about 30 minutes before bedtime can actually help curb migraine headaches. This was according to a small study by Brazilian scientists. In the study's first month, the participants didn't take any melatonin, and they were just kind of looking at um, the, the, the migraine pattern in the participants. During the study's last three months, the participants took three milligrams of melatonin 30 minutes before bedtime. The melatonin was intended to prevent migraines, not treat the migraines. We're really looking at prevention here, okay? And so what they found in this study, so remember, so they, they first looked at the migraine pattern, and then they gave them the melatonin. Again, it was three milligrams, 30 minutes before bedtime, and they're really looking at the prevention of migraine headaches. Of the 32 participants completing the study, more than two-thirds said their migraine frequency was reduced by half or better after taking melatonin for three months. That's pretty awesome. This included eight patients who reported no migraines, seven who reported a 75% drop in migraines, and 10 who said their migraine frequency decreased by about 50%. Overall headache intensity was reduced as well. At the beginning of the study, the woman's average migraine intensity was seven on a scale of zero to 10, and that dropped to three by the end of the study. Three milligrams of melatonin 30 minutes before bedtime might be something you want to talk to your doctor about if you do suffer from migraines. There's some good evidence here that melatonin isn't just for sleep, is it? It looks like melatonin can help us to preserve bone health as we get older. Very important. We have to preserve bone density and strength as we get older. And there's some evidence that melatonin can help.